Good day and welcome to Alena Media TV. We are broadcasting from Toronto, Canada. I am Elsa Abraham and in this episode we are bringing you African news. Here is your headlines. Sudan and Ethiopia border clashes fuel wider tensions. And Khartoum also accuses Ethiopia of arming rebels. In our last story, stranded migrants arrive in Ethiopia from Yemen on first return flight since the start of COVID-19 pandemic. Let's go for a quick break. We'll be right back. Welcome back from that short break now. A decades-old border dispute over fertile farmland between Sudan and Ethiopia is feeding regional rivalry and even sparking fears of border conflict, analyst says. The border quarrel is over Ethiopian farmers cultivating land claimed by Sudan, but it is stalking wider tensions over Ethiopia's Blue Nile mega dam, which downriver Khartoum and Cairo view as a threat to their water supply. The territorial argument also comes amid the fallout from the unrest in Ethiopia's troubled Tigray region with tens of thousands of refugees having fled into Sudan. Who owns the land? Arguments over Al Fashaga and an agricultural area sandwiched between two rivers where Ethiopia's northern Amara and Tigray regions meet, Sudan's eastern Gadarev state date back decades with the zone contested the exact area is not clear but al fashaga covers some 12,000 square kilometers 4,630 square miles an area claimed by both sudan and ethiopia but analysts and observers point to a flashpoint zone directly along the border covering some 250 square kilometers just under 100 square miles on paper, according to colonial era treaties from 1902 and 1907, the international boundary runs east of Af Al Fashaga, meaning the land belongs to Sudan, according to Alex Dewal, a professor at Tufts University in the US and an expert on the region. But on the ground, over the years, thousands of Ethiopian farmers have entered the region to cultivate during the rainy season. At times, Sudanese forces sought to expel the farmers only for them to return. Tensions soared in 1995, according to analysts, when relations between Khartoum and Addis Ababa soared after a failed assassination attempt against Ethiopian president Hosni Mubarak while he was in Addis Ababa. Ethiopia blamed Sudan for the attack and then pushed into Al Fashaga, allowing its farmers to cultivate the land there. Since then, thousands of Ethiopian farmers settled in the area, cultivating land and paying taxes to Ethiopian authorities. Khartoum and Addis Ababa held border talks over the years, but no clear demarcation lines were marked out. Al Fashaga lies close to Ethiopia's troubled Tigray region, where deadly conflict erupted in November between Ethiopia's federal and Tigray regional forces. The fighting sent some 60,000 Ethiopian refugees fleeing into Sudan. As violence in Ethiopia came closer, Khartoum sent troops into the Al Fashaga region to recapture the stolen land and take up positions on the international lines, Sudan state media reported. Authorities feared the situation in Tigray would slip out of control and armed fighters infiltrate into the country, Sudanese military aspect Amin Ismail said. Ethiopian Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed has leaned heavily on security forces from his country's Amara region during the fighting in Tigray. Amara officials also view Al Fashaga as rightfully theirs, and there are fears that Abiy will struggle to keep expansionist elements in check. In December, Khartoum dispatched reinforcement to Al Fashaga after Ethiopian forces and militias allegedly ambushed Sudanese troops, killing at least four soldiers. Tensions escalated, although Addis Ababa sought to downplay the fighting. 
a string of deadly clashes followed with both sides trading accusations of violence and territorial violations. Sudan has in recent weeks also claimed to have regained control of large swathes of the region, insisting it had always fallen within its boundaries. Meanwhile, Addis Ababa also accused Khartoum of having invaded the land that is part of Ethiopia's territory, warning it would resort to a military response if needed. Now, both Sudan and Ethiopia face their own domestic challenges, including economic woes and deadly conflict. Sudan is navigating in a rocky transitional period following the April 2019 ouster of dictator Omar al-Bashir. Aside from Tigray, Ethiopia faces internal unrest, including in the Benishangu, Gumuz, and the Oromia regions. The border tensions have heaped strains on Khartoum and Addis Ababa's relations, who, along with Egypt, have failed to strike a deal over the feeling and the operation of the Ethiopia's Blue Nile Mega Dam. The Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam, set to be Africa's largest hydroelectric project, has been a source of tension in the Nile Basin of ever since Ethiopia broke ground on it nearly a decade ago. Sudan views the barrage as a threat to its own dams without a binding deal over the feeling and the operation of the Ethiopia's dam. Khartoum is nowadays close to Cairo. This man, top Ethiopian and Sudanese army officials, signed a deal on bilateral military cooperation. Egypt, which depends on the Nile for about 97% of its irrigation and drinking water, sees the dam as an existential threat. The border dispute is a local issue separate from the dam, but it feeds into wider politics. Sudanese military aspect. Ismails believes that Sudan and Ethiopia will have to resort to a diplomatic resolution of the border crisis. There cannot be an all-out military confrontation, Ismail said. It is simply not in the interest of both countries. It will be a major risk for both sides. Now moving on to our next story for today, Khartoum also accuses Ethiopia of arming rebels. Sudan and Ethiopia have disagreed on a third issue with Khartoum now accusing Addis Ababa of arming rebels in its territory. Ethiopia has denied the allegations. The two countries fell, fell out following a dispute on how to fill Ethiopia's Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam in the Blue Nile and afterwards disagreed over an unmarked borderline in Al Fashaga in which Khartoum claims Ethiopians have invaded its territory. In a report on Wednesday by the official Sudanese agency, the Sunna, Khartoum accused Addis Ababa of arming rebels in its southern regions in what could constitute proxy wars. Officials in Sudan said Ethiopia has provided logistical support to rebel groups led by Joseph Tuka in the southern state of the Blue Nile, citing officials in Khartoum. The news agency said Ethiopia had provided arms and other combat equipment at the end of February, ostensibly by to provide a buffet against Sudan's deployment of the military near the disputed border in Al Fashaga. Sudan did not immediately provide evidence, even though Addis Ababa has denied any interference in Sudan. Now, in our last story for today, stranded migrants arrive in Ethiopia from Yemen on first return flight since the start of COVID-19 pandemic. Today, a flight carrying 140 stranded migrants departed from Aden International Airport to Addis Ababa. This was the first flight to Ethiopia from Yemen under the International Organization of Migration, the IOM's Voluntary Humanitarian Return the VHR program since the COVID-19 global pandemic was declared. This flight is a vital lifeline for migrants who have been stranded for months on end in unsafe conditions, said Antonio Vittorino, the IOM director general. In the coming months, we have to see more migrants able to safely go home to their loved ones in this way. Despite a reduction in the number of migrants arriving in Yemen from 138,000 in 2019 
to just over 37,500 in 2020. The dangers they face have drastically increased over the past year, unable to continue across Yemen to the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, the KSA. Many stranded migrants lack shelter, water, and food. Migrants also have been at increasing risk of experiencing xenophobia, exploitation, and detention over the last year. I have a family to provide for in Ethiopia, so I left to find work, said Mohammed, a 25-year-old man traveling on the return flight. I came to Yemen to make it to Saudi Arabia, but I was not successful. I can't describe any situation here, as it is very difficult. I have been homeless and poor. I am happy to be going home, but I have nothing to bring back to my family. I will never leave again, he added. Transiting through Yemen was already a perilous undertaking even before COVID-19. Migrants first traveled through the scorching deserts of the Horn of Africa and then across to the Gulf of Aden in boats so cramped that passengers often die of asphyxiation. In Yemen, they are exposed to kidnapping, torture, and abuse while navigating a deadly conflict, while men also comprise the majority of people traveling on its route. Women and children remain the most vulnerable. Since the start of the pandemic, IOM's displacement tracking matrix reports that at least 9,000 people have become desperate enough to put their lives back in the hands of smugglers to return to the Horn of Africa on dangerous boats. Smuggling networks that operate along this route across the Gulf sometimes force migrants off overcrowded boats. Earlier this month, IOM also reported that 20 migrants lost their lives in such an incident. Since 2020, IOM teams in Aden registered over 6,000 migrants expressing a wish to return to Ethiopia. In December, the government of Ethiopia visited the ancient coastal city and verified the nationality of 1,100 people, the first step of the voluntary returns process. The remaining migrants from this group are expected to travel in the coming weeks. Additionally, thousands of other migrants remain stranded elsewhere in Yemen, including the Marib, where IOM hopes to extend its return efforts soon i'm thankful to government of yemen for making with each other to help this group of migrants added the director general v vittorino this is where we end today's episode on african news please like share comment let us know your thoughts on this particular episode thanks for watching